Jeremiah 14 2. So let's say we're going to believe the Bible, the ancient records of the Bible, or we're going to believe a man that's bugged out, yelling crazy out of his mind, down out of town in Raleigh, North Carolina. Fuck that downtown. He was bugged out. Came up. So that's what's going on right now. It's time for the battle. Battle. For the blasphemy of the bastards. Let me get at him. Let me get at him. No more talking this action. Brothers, pat me my sword. It's time for his lion to roar. He pointed his finger at the temple of my God. Then it's all with his arm. Uh, yeah, it is all with his head. Uh, I want the city painted red. Uh, with the blood of an Edomite. Let his kids see him dead. Huh. Memorialize this day. Let's go. So they can know just what he said. Huh. This destruction under Cana. And I can cool. think of nothing greater. Go. Off with his arm, off with his head, off with his lights. I'm going to put him to bed. You heard what he said. He wanted us dead. So I'm taking his tongue and I'm making him beg. And give me that shoulder. Because I'm rolling with warriors, soldiers. He the eagle, but we see a vulture. And a virus, we curing the culture. Got a killer left the source. Like a heathen off his horse. Light his ass up. Human torch. Didn't want to do it, but I'm forced to burn it all down. To the scorch, seeing the end from the beginning. I came for the cuss, but I stayed for the skin. And see blood in his mouth and the sight got me grinning. We wetting him up, make him look like a gremlin. Better come correct. Check your demeanor. We'll hang up Hello, your head like a stripper. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Hebrews 7 14. Look at Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. Hebrews 7.14. This is documented. Documented history. Don't it is, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So there's evidence that Jesus Christ comes from the lineage of the tribe of Judah. That's right. Because he said Jewish. When I put an ish on the end of something, what does that mean? If I say your shirt was blackish, bluish, that means I don't really no, quite no, know. Yeah, yeah, no, it's kind of similar to that. That's right. right. So King of the that, Jews. Jewish. Ish King of the Jews. Like that, That's but right. not quite. So we said the tribe of Judah is where Jesus came from, right? Jeremiah 14 and 2. Bring it on. So let's say we're going to believe the Bible, the ancient records of the Bible, or we're going to believe a man that's bugged out, yelling crazy out of his mind, down out of town in Raleigh, North Carolina. Listen. 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 Chapter 14 and verse 2. Listen to this, y'all. So this is Jeremiah 14, verse 2. Judah morning. Judah morning, the same tribe that Christ came from. It says Judah's in mourning. Greek. Right. And the gates that relinquish. Great. They are black unto the ground. What color are the Jews? They are black unto the ground. What color is the tribe of Judah? They are black unto the ground. Now, so the Bible says the tribe of Judah is black unto the ground. Hey. Jesus Christ comes from the tribe of Judah. Right. So should I believe the ancient records of Jeremiah and the Apostle Paul who lived closer to that time? Or should I believe the guy that's downtown right in North Carolina? Hey, Don't guys, have fuck down, down, downtown, you know, right. he, 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 he bugged out. Right, the this, is the, out. this is the problem. You know, Every time the word of God comes out, you, you know. see spirits like this. Yeah. Right. You got to understand, we in a spiritual war. Yeah. We are in a spiritual war right, right. now for the souls of God's people. Yeah. Right. When the word of God come out, you see this. Yeah. But this wasn't happening until the word of God came out. Yeah. That's how you know that demons are coming around. Yeah. Watch this. Mark chapter 4, verse 14. Let me show you real quick before you leave. Because... Every time the word of God is being sown in the hearts of his children, yeah. Satan comes to remove that from us. Yeah. Watch this word. Read. This is the book of Mark, chapter 4 and verse 14. Bring it out. The sower sought the word. Read. And these are they by the wayside. You are they by the wayside. We sown the word of God in your heart. Then you got two on the wayside that's listening to the word of God. Read. Where the word is sown. But when they heard, have heard. But when you have heard the word of God, read. Satan cometh immediately. What happened? Satan cometh immediately. As soon as you start to hear the words of God in his true form, Satan comes immediately. Read. And taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. That's it, right. Satan will cause a distraction. Wow, You're going to be hearing the word of God, and then all of a sudden your phone will ring. You're going to be hearing the word of God, and an attractive man or attractive I woman will walk past here. Right. You're going to be hearing the word of God, and then so all of a sudden crazy. somebody will just start coming to you. So you start to hear hearing the word. Uh -huh. But before you was hearing the word, they weren't here causing no distraction. Jesus, right. Jesus, this is how you know something Jesus, spiritual is going Jesus, on right now, sis. You being taught the true Jesus, word of God. He being taught the true word of God right now. And I know he done heard it before because he came up. 
So see, guess what's going see. on right now? It's Look. a spiritual war. Right. You know, every time oh, you try to hear a word, the Satan comes out of the word from you. You know, right. right now, what he's really doing is acting yeah, a fool. Because right here, we move and see. Look, he, he said Christ got a blue eye, but he don't know. Yeah, he was a white man. You see this? He just said Jesus yeah, wasn't black, all was white. white. Man, yeah. Now he's saying he's white. Yeah. Yeah. It's all to come yeah, up yeah, yeah, to yeah, 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 he was a white he was man. A man. Yeah, he was a white what man. What color was Adam? Yeah, he was a white man. Bring yeah. it up. Yeah. Not sure, right? I don't Adam was, was the first man, man right? You. Genesis chapter 2. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 7. Bring it up. And the Lord God for men of the dust of the ground. The Garden of Eden was in Africa. The Garden of Eden was in between four major rivers. The Blue Nile, the White Nile, Pisces, and various other different, the Euphrates River. That's over in what the world calls the Middle East. It's the top of Africa. So Adam and Eve were created in Africa. The Bible says that the Lord took the dust of the ground and created Adam in Africa. If I want to dig into the dirt, what color would it become? The deeper, the deeper I dig in the dirt, what color does it become? Like your color, dark skin, or his color, or it may be this shade right here. But the deeper you go, the darker it gets. Right. You see what I'm saying? So according to the Bible, he was a black man. Right. Adam was a black man. Now, go to chapter 21, go to verse 21. Watch this. So Adam was black, right, sis? What was your name again, sis? I know you got kids to bust. Zaria. All right, watch this. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, the black man. Right? Come on. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs. And he took one of Adam's ribs. So he took Adam's DNA. Go ahead. And closed up the flesh. Come on. His flesh is dead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man. Made he a woman. You hear that? So Eve had to be what color if Adam was black? And the Lord took her from his DNA and created her. What color was she? She had to be black too. Right. Because if your dad is black, you're going to be black. Right. If your mother is black, then you're going to be black. If mother and father. You understand what I'm saying? So Adam was a black man. And so was his wife Eve. Now, what color was Noah? If Adam and Eve was black, and Noah is a descendant of Adam and Eve, then what color was Noah? Okay, Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. That's right. What color were they? They were black. Out of Shem came a man named Abraham. What color was Abraham? Black, which he had a son named Isaac, who had a son named Jacob. What color were they? And out of Jacob came the 12 tribes, like Puerto Ricans, so-called African-Americans, Jamaicans, West Indians, Cubans, Haitians, Dominicans, Regional Indians, Colombians, Mexicans, Argentinians. So if their father was black, what color are these people? Bring it up. They're also black. Right. Right. These people right here make up the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. That's right. Right. Our forefather Jacob wrestled an angel, so God gave him the name Israel in replacement of his name Jacob. So when somebody come to you and say, it don't matter what color Jesus is, well, it matter what color you is, don't because don't you get racially profiled because of your color? I thought your color didn't matter. Don't nobody go uh, go straight through a red light. Why they stop? Because color matters. Uh, you right. understand? It's only when it comes to Jesus that all of a sudden color doesn't matter. When everybody that ever lived on the earth, their color matters. You right? You understand what I'm saying? This is why you got to start thinking. You got to start thinking to yourself. Why don't they want me to know the truth? You understand? Watch this. Go to the book of Revelation again. Bring it out. Watch this, y'all. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Bring it out. Let's reveal Jesus Christ real quick. What's your, what's your name, sis? Nadesh. Nadesh. Nice to meet you. My name is Captain Get Alive. We Israel united in Christ. We teach our people where they are according to the Bible. Bring it out. When you read the Bible, you'll never read African American. That's our hyphenated nationality. Africa conquered by a white man named the Scipios Africanus. America conquered by or named after a white man named uh, Mirago. That's beauty. So these two names come from two Caucasian men. Right. There's no way you and I can be African American when those are two names from two Caucasian men. That's right. But you got white people that were born in South Africa. They moved to America. You don't call them African American. But they were literally born on the continent. And you were born here. 
you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a confusion of words. It's all to sow discord amongst our communities to divide us. Right. We are the children of God. Hey, hey, hey. I watch this read. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, and verse 14. This, his head and his hair were white like wool. Bible says Jesus Christ had white woolly hair. But when I look at um, these images that we've been given after the Renaissance era, all I see is Jesus Christ as a Caucasian man with long blonde hair, right. brown hair. But that's not the biblical imagery. That's not right archaeologically, that's not right, right geographically, and it's not right historically. Right. Right. But when you look at ancient imagery like this right here, my sister, where it says Mary and Christ before the Renaissance era, what color? Well, after the Renaissance period, what color? Bring it out. Right. This right here is called iconoclast. Now, if you look at these ancient artifacts, now you had ancient imagery in Russia, Romania, various different parts of that type of that part of the world. You have a church called the Baronet in Romania, where you have nothing but black images of the Jews, Jesus, God, the angels, everybody. But look at this right here. Look what he's doing on this picture. Can you see what he's doing on that picture? You see black image there, black image there. Look what he's doing in that picture right there, sis. What is he doing? What is he doing to that face of that picture? He's painted what color? No, yeah, he painted white because it was originally black, just like these images are. You got imagery of people changing the biblical images of the of Jesus Christ and the apostles and the angels of God, yes, changing them to Caucasian images. This is all called psychological warfare. That's right. It's to mess with your head. So now when you see Jesus, you automatically associate him with who? A white man. Which then makes you feel what inside subconsciously? Inferiority. Right. Because if God looked like this, but I got this broad nose and this woolly kinky hair, I must not be up to the level or the standard of what God is. That's yeah. right. Subconsciously, us and our children feel that. Right. Because I can add as a little child that's five years old, what color is Jesus? He'll say white automatically. Who taught him that? Doll is the black doll. And which one is the white doll? That one. Which doll is the pretty doll? Which doll is the nice doll? Which doll is the bad doll? Who taught him that? Why would I t put a doll in front of a child and say, which one of these dolls is ugly? And they pointed the black doll. Who taught them that? Bring it out. So consciously, where does this imagery come from? This kind of imagery comes from iconoclast. That's, That's right. right. The Renaissance era is when the so-called white man came back into power in Europe. Bring it out. He pushed out the black Jews and put them in slavery and brought them to this side of the world. That's right. In the 1415 and 1600s. Right. During that time, he took all the ancient biblical imagery of black images and painted them Caucasian. Right. Right. This is why we have to reveal the truth today because of the lies you've been taught for the last five centuries. Right. Now watch this, read it again. Bring it out. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. Come on. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So look at this. Jesus Christ had white woolly hair, sis, right here. See, Jesus Christ had white woolly hair. He had hair like yours, my sister. Like my hair. Come on. As white as snow. Like this right here with the brother guy right here. Come on. His eyes have the flame of fire. Watch this. And his feet. Now he looked down at Jesus' feet because they wore sandals at that time, right? Go ahead. Like Grass. Jesus' speak was like grass. What color is grass? What color is that? What color? It's a brown. Right. Like you ever seen the uh, brass section in a band, the marching band? That's like the trumpet, the trombone. It's like a goldish brown. If I took a trumpet or a trombone and I put it in a fiery furnace and let it get burned, what color would it then become? What color would it, if, if it get burned, what color would it become? It become what color? It become black. Read it again. And his feet like a divine fire. As if they burned in a furnace. So Jesus Christ looked like brass as if it was burned in fire. What that's color is right. Jesus? That. He's black. That's that's right. Right. black. And Mary was black. That's his note. His Bring father that. Joseph was black. Which Bring means Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were black. Which means King David and Solomon were black. That's because right. that's who he descends from. And this is not us spewing hate. Right. This is us, us spewing truth. Right. Because for so long you've been taught lies. Yes. I'll give you an example. What makes a black woman, a beautiful sister like yourself, want to put blonde hair on her head? Bring it out. What do you, subconsciously, what makes us want to do it? 
when we already look like Jesus. Right. We already naturally beautiful like him with our natural state. What makes us alter that? Because the things that we heard. The things that we heard, right. And the things that we've seen. Because guess what? Your eyes is the gateway to your soul. Right. When I want, like, don't you got memories from childhood? Yeah. Do you got memories from childhood? How do you still remember stuff that happened 20 years ago? Bring it out. As if you were still there. I can think of something that happened in my childhood. Like, now I'm in the cousin over there. I'm in my AT fail off the thing. You remember it vividly like you're still there. Right. Because your eyes, well, your eyes were the first cameras. Your brain and your eyes were the first cameras. You captured memories. Right. So when they have you a white image every day, all day, every church, for 30-something years, it's been cemented into your brain. Now you have to unlock those chains with the Word of God, That's what right. it truly says. That's because if not, you're just going to fall right back into default mode. You're just going to fall back into default. Why? Because that's what you've been taught. We're here to break them chains off your mind in these last days. Right. You think it's important to know what color Jesus is? Perfect. You think it's important to know what color Jesus is? You say yes. yes. What about you, my sister? Yes. You say yes, right? Why do you think it's important? Because a lot of people out here will argue with us. They will say, it doesn't matter what color Jesus is. Bring it up. Look, put their hands on their ears and everything. See that? It doesn't matter what Jesus is. It doesn't matter what color. I agree. That's what some people will say, right? Why does, it, why does it not matter now? Because in slavery, as you were getting hung from trees, right? Teacher, they made a point to make Jesus a white man. You hear this? And this ain't over. Because right now in Mauritania and Yemen, guess what? In Mississippi, slavery wasn't abolished in 2013. To 2013. Nine years, 11 years ago is when slavery was officially abolished in Mississippi. Right so it ain't over. And you know how it ain't over? You can go to the museum and watch movies right now to see your people home, right? You see what I'm saying? And they get mad when the truth come out. Because they know it's the truth. Because if it wasn't the truth, I don't get mad at that. I don't care. Those guys don't know what they're talking about. But the truth hurt. Right. Watch this. Read that. The book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 4. Bring it out. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Christ said you got to be careful that no man trick you. Watch this. Read for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. So Christ said what? I am Christ. He said, many will come in my name, saying what? I am Christ. I am Christ and do what? And shall deceive many. And a lot of people are going to be tricked by these, all these people coming out here saying they Jesus. Right. That's why you got so many different pictures in him. But look, different eyes, different eye color, different hair texture. We ain't never even think. Why did I hear different? Why had a consistent picture in him? Bring it up. Because all these people fabricated their own image of him. But this ain't what he looked like. Right. According to the Bible, give me the other. Drop that. Give me the other. According to the Bible, this is more for more so what he looked like. But when our kids see this, they say, oh, that's the devil. Because in your mind, black men have been painted as the devil. Right. As criminals. As drug dealers. As jailbirds, as deadbeats. Bring it out. This is what has been subconsciously planted into your brain. So now when you see it, you say, Jesus cannot be a Negro. Because Negroes ain't no good. That's what you've been subconsciously taught your whole life. But the Bible says, what are you here? For many shall come in my name, Wait. saying, I am Christ. Wait. And shall deceive many. So many people have been tricked by this image right here. Right. So now when we show you this image, our people get angry. They get mad. You heard what the brother said earlier? He said, I'd rather listen to the white man than listen right. to y'all niggas. Why? When we read the book. That's right. And we got images to show you. We say our words. We, we young men in our 30s and 40s and 20s, these are not our words. We weren't born when Jesus wrote this or when this was written. Right. 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 So why when we show it to you, you say, I cannot believe the Negro. I cannot believe a black man. Why? Because you've been subconsciously taught that black men are no good. Right. That's right. That we're not intelligent. We're only intelligent when we talk a certain way and look a certain way. And when we bend over and allow them to run over us. As soon as we stand up for revolution, what happens? Patrice Lumumba, you ever heard of him? Bring it In out. the Congo, he stood up to try to get Belgium out of the Congo because he was oppressing his people. King Leopold was oppressing his people. He wanted King Leopold out. He wanted his people to make money through sales. Right. And killed him. Right. Omar of the Gaddafi. A man named Kwame Nkrumah, Martin Luther King. They all say they love Martin Luther King now. But they had him assassinated. Bring it up. Everybody said, hey, Malcolm X made some good points. But they had him assassinated. Jesus Christ. Did you know that they had him killed? Tim Chuck. Bring it up. Did you know that did you know that Jesus was killed by the government? 
Did you know that? Give me John 19. Bring it out! Uh, Jesus Christ was killed by the Roman government. Now the people that descend from Rome that run America today say they love Jesus. Does that make any sense? No. They asked us to kill Jesus, but now all of a sudden they love him. But then when you say, well, you know that man that y'all killed over 2,000 years ago was a black man, then they argue with you, it don't matter. But it mattered during the Roman time because they hung all the Jews on crosses at that time. That's, right. That's why when Jesus died, he had two Jews right next to him, black Jews on the cross. That's right. We make it seem like Jesus was the only man to die on the cross. They, Romans hung thousands of black Jews on crosses. Yeah. It was called capital punishment. It's the same thing as the electric chair of the gas chamber right. today. Yes. But we don't know this history, sis. Nobody taught us this. Watch this, John 19 and 1. The book of John, chapter 19 and verse 1. Listen, go. Yes. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. You know what it means to scourge? Beat you. Pontius Pilate was set up by the Roman government as the, uh, what, was his, what was his title? He was the, uh, he was the what? He was the Tetrarch. Right? Of the, of the governor of, of Judea during the time of Rome. Right. That's right. So he took Jesus, put him in jail, and beat this black man, Jesus. Go ahead. And the soldiers had a crown of thorns and put it on his head, Green. and they put on him a purple rose. So that's why we wore purple, right? right? Because they mocked our king in purple. Right? Yes, so right. we, made, we wore purple to mock them for what our king gonna do when he come back to destroy them, just like at that time they mocked him. Right. They put a crown of thorn on his head. Right. The thorns were sticking to his head. So if they put the thorn on his head, all of the thorns were sticking into his head to cut it. They did this to mock the king of kings, right. the lord of lords. Right. It was the so-called white man that did it. Right. It was wrong that did it. And some people say, well, the Jews gave him up. You're right. Evil black people did give him up to Rome. But the Romans still made the execution. Right. They hung him on the cross. So all that evil happened from them, then now they're going to tell you they love him now. Bring it up. But they only love him if you look like them. Yeah, they talk. They don't love him if you look like us. Because right. you look like us, ain't no way. I can't bow down to that. But when he come back, everybody going to bow to this black man. That's right. No matter who they are, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, get up. Uh, Vladimir Putin, they don't know who they are. Right. Everybody going to bow to the king of kings, lord of lords. That's why right. right now you and I got to get ourselves right. So when he come back, he going to destroy us with this. That's right. So we can be saved and be on his side when he come. This is what the whole Bible is about. You waking up to the truth, hey. and then you coming back to who you are so that you can get the kingdom of heaven. That's, right. That's what it's all about. And once you do that, that's when the Lord gonna send judgment. That's, right. That's when he gonna send destruction. Right, read it again. Bring it out. And the soldiers planted a crown of thorns oh. and put it on his head, oh, and they put on him a purple robe. And they put on him a purple robe. They put on him a purple robe. Chapter 20, verse 32. Watch it, I mean 1932. Watch verse 32. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. Read. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his leg. Right. But one of the soldiers with their spear pierced his side. You hear that? It said after they saw that Jesus was dead, this white man, this soldier, took a sword and stuck him in his side after he was already dead. How many right. times have we done been shot down in these streets and they keep shooting our lifeless dead body? Right now, that is Christ died a black man's death. Yeah, right. Read it again. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already the dead already, they break none his legs. Right. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side. And forward came they have blood and water. Right. So this is what they did to Christ. Did you know that they did that too? Did you know that his breath, his death was gruesome like that? That they put a big wooden cross on his back and made him carry it through the city. Those crosses were two, three, four hundred pounds. They were big heavy blocks of wood. That's right. And they put it on his back, made him carry it, and they poured his beard out. I think it's big. You didn't know that? Give me, watch this. Give me uh, Isaiah 50 and 6. Isaiah saw the vision of what was going to happen to Christ in the future. Watch That's this. Right. Isaiah 50 verse 6. Bring it out. The Come book, on. The book of Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 6. I gave my back to the spider. So they beat his back. You know how, give me that picture. Mm -hmm. This picture right here. Bring it out, Kev. Okay. Um, what? what a picture of the open wound on the back. It's not so. It's an old well, it's right there on the Where is it? 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 Okay, you see this picture right here? That open wound that they beat the, that's the slaves back in? That's what they did to Jesus. Read it again. I gave my back to the spider. Gave his back to the spider. They whipped his back. Go ahead. And my cheeks to them that put up the hair. And cheeks me his, his face. They ripped their hairs out of his face. Right. If I were to take my hand and rip this man's beard out, his face would swell instantly. Right. It's excruciating 
pain. They said what they did to Jesus. Keep That's reading. right. I hid not my face from sin and spitting. And they spit in his face. They ripped his hairs out. They beat his back. They put a crown of thorns on him. They mocked him in purple. And then they spit in his face. This happened to Jesus Christ for me and you. He right. took this on for you and I can get the kingdom of heaven. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? So this is why we got to repent. This is why he's going to be angry with us if we don't repent. All right. This is why, Hebrews 10, 29, 20, 29, watch this, see, okay, right. this is why Jesus is going to be angry if we don't change. Right. When he returns, he's going to punish us if we don't change. But we can do it. It ain't hard. We just rebel. That's we are rebellious, right. evil people at times. Watch this, read. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 29. Yeah. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall we be thought worthy? Who have trodden underfoot the Son of God. So Christ was already humiliated for us when he died for us. He gave us the opportunity to get ourselves together. When he returned, if you didn't take the opportunity to get yourself together, he said you're going to get a sore of punishment. Because you've already humiliated him again. He already got humiliated in front of thousands for us. That's right. Now, you humiliated him again by not following his word. That's, right. That's what he said. Come reading it. Of how much sore of punishment suppose ye? Shall he be not worthy who have trodden under underfoot the Son of God Read. and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was crucified and in holy things? So Christ was, was, was crucified and his blood is supposed to cover us now. So if you do sin, make a mistake, you got a chance to repent of that evil. Because back in the day, if you committed adultery, what happened to you? If you got caught in adultery, what happened to you during the time of Moses? They would kill you, right? But people commit adultery all the time. But now, in these last days, it's still wrong to commit adultery. But though Christ died, it gives you an opportunity to repent. You say, you know what? That was evil what I was doing. I'm going to stop doing that. Oh, I used to lie on my brother. That's evil. Let me stop doing that. You had that opportunity. But at this time, you got punished. So now he's saying, if we don't take the opportunity of repentance, when he returns, he's going to punish us worse than what he would have done during that time. Watch this. Read it again. Oh, how much? So punishment, suppose ye shall he be not worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified crucified, and in the holy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of grace. Right. Spirit of grace. So Christ gave us grace. You know what grace is? Anybody? What's grace, family? Uh, I don't know. The Father did this uh, with strength. I mean, being great. It's all in mean, some light. Not grateful. But grace, what is grace? So good, ma'am. So good, okay. What about you? Mercy, like, oh, is it merciful? Yeah, it merciful, okay, good. I was about to say, so, so here's a question say you go, say your rent due on the, the first of the month, yeah, wait. and they say, What well, you got to a tip to pay that t that nine extra nine days is called what? Grace, grace, bring it up. But what happens on the 10th day if it ain't paid? Oh, it's vision known as coming. That's right. Right? You're going to get a sign on your door, right? That's so that's what Christ did. When he died and went back to the Father, he left us grace. But when he come back, if we didn't pay, or we didn't take advantage of the grace time, what's going to happen? Bring it out. The eviction notice, that's which is just, watch this, read. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Make sure you read that flyer, sis. Read. Teaching us. So grace is to do what? Teaching us. Grace is to teach us. Watch this, brother. Read. That denying ungodliness. That denying ungodliness. During this time of grace, we're supposed to deny ungodliness. Go ahead. And worldly lust. And worldly lust. Read. We should live soberly. So now we're supposed to be sober. That means not high, not drunk. Go ahead. Righteously. We're supposed to live righteously. Mean keep God's commandments. Read. And godly. And Godly, read in this present world. So, wow, well, let me ask you a question. And I want you to be honest with me because I'm gonna be honest with you. Oh, yeah. Is it hard to live godly in this present world that we live yeah. in right now? You say, Hell yeah. What about you? Is it hard to live godly in this present world? That's it, why easy? You say it's easy. Okay, okay. So, the brothers say easy, but you say it's hard. Why you say it's hard? Uh, well, with me personally, I struggle with like my own temptation and stuff. Okay, okay. Um, okay. But other than that, I mean, I get where he comes from at the same time, but I feel like we all do 
deal with different, different things. Different things. And so yeah. and I struggle with temptation too. Right. We all do. I've done those old too. Yeah. We got the choice, free will. Right. right. So so I like what you said. Your own lusts and your own temptations inside you make it difficult, right? This is why you need a network. Right. If I'm if I'm struggling right. with pornography, he can then take the time and say, well, let's go through some scriptures. Right. Let's stay on the phone. Mm -hmm. You understand? Let's talk about this. Let's do this. Uh, you know what? Tomorrow, come through and we'll go over some scriptures about it. Or we can discuss this to help you overcome it. Because guess what? What you're battling, what you're battling, we all battle. Right. But it's a difference in being overcome and battling. Battling means the temptation is there, but I don't go after it. Right. Right. Yeah. But to be overcome meaning I'm giving in to it every chance I get. Right. You understand? You got there, read it. 1 John 5. The book of 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 3. Bring it out. For this is the love of God. But so this is how you know if you love God or not. Read. That we keep his commandment. What we got to do to love God? That we keep his commandment. We got to do to love God. Keep asking him. Got to keep his commandments. Go ahead. And his commandments are not grievous. And the commandments ain't hard. Right. It ain't hard. We make it hard with our own desire. Watch this, James 1.13. Watch this. Because in the book of James, James went into it. He talked about it because he know what we struggle with. Watch what James says. Start at 12. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. So you're blessed when you endure temptation. Meaning you don't go after it. The temptation or the lust or desire to sell drugs is there, but I don't do it. The, the, the temptation to sleep with another man's wife, I don't do it. Right. The temptation to eat things that are defiled or to lie or to steal. It's there, but I don't do it. Right. The Bible says you bless when you're able to endure the temptation. Go ahead. Bless is the man that endure temptation. Right. For he is tried. He shall receive the crown of life. The crown of life is eternal life. Immortality. Never die. This body that you see right now, this is weak. You can shoot me right now, I can die. You can cut my throat, I can die. I can die from cancer or liver disease, right? right? But in that day, when that immortal body take over you, that angelic body, you won't die. You'll live forever. Jesus. And nothing Jesus. will be able to harm you. Jesus. So now he's saying you'll receive the crown of life when you learn to endure temptation. Yes. Watch this part. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, the which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. I want you to, I want to hold something real quick. I want you to go to Leviticus 21, verse 5. Bring it out. Because you're actually keeping God's commandment right now, and you don't even know you're doing it. You're not in one respect, but you don't know that you're not doing it. This is why it's got to be revealed to you. Watch this. The book of Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. They shall not make boldness upon their head. We can't take a razor and shave our head. Now, if you're going forehead ball like a brother may be losing his hair, that's fine. That's natural. He can't do nothing about that. But you can't Michael Jordan your stuff. You can't take a razor and shave it all off. Go ahead. They shall not make bonus upon their head. Right. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So you got your beard intact. Excellent. Right. I see you shave. Right. So the Bible says, the, yes, the Israelite man, we're not supposed to shave off the corners of our beard. That's right. That's why all the men out here, even the little scrub that I got, you see, we let it grow. Because the Bible commands us to do so. Right. That's why when you see ancient art of Paul and the apostles and Christ, they always had what? A beard. Because biblically, it was always known that a man was supposed to have a beard. Right. Like you said, now we got free choice. But what happens with that free choice when you couldn't be? We get up, black men. It's power. It's power in the earth. Oh yeah. yeah, it's your man. You a lion. Right. That's how I know the difference between a female lion and a male lion. And why some of these people walking up and down the street right now is really men, but you don't know them. Right. They shave their beard. That's and they dress like a woman. But the Bible says a man is supposed to have a beard. Right. If it grows, let it grow. That's biblical. Now watch this part. Ready? The Lord make any cuttings in their flesh. I always like to bring this up because you see why I cut my flesh. Yeah. Bring it Before up. I knew the truth, I got tattoos. Yeah, tattoos cut your flesh, right? Go to 1927. Go back one chapter. Yeah. Look, the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, and verse 27. Bring it out. Ye shall not round the corners of your head. Right, so that means you shave outside. Like, it's okay to get a mohawk if you want it, but you can't. Bald it. So if you taper it up, it's cool to taper your, your hair. There's no sin to taper your hair, but you can't ball fade or ball taper. It's still got to be some hair there. Go ahead. Neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. You can't mar the corners of your beard, meaning the natural line. You can't break into the natural line. You got to let it stay there and keep that edged up. Right. But you can't cut down into it. I can even trim it down with the guards and make it lower. But I'm not supposed to take a razor and cut into it and destroy the natural line. That's where the sin comes from. That's why we get ingrown hairs and shaving bumps. 
because our hair naturally curls up. When you cut it, it curls up on the inside, causing an infection, and a bump appears. That's, right. That's because God don't want us doing it. Go ahead. <laughs> Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the day, nor print any marks upon you. When we was in Africa, we used to print marks on ourselves. Hey, no. And we used to cut our slits and our, eyelid, our eyelids. See, now that fashion is coming back today. Well, we put marks on ourselves and we cut our eyelids. I used to do the same, I mean, uh, eyebrows. I used to do the same thing until I learned the truth. This is why the Bible said the gospel ain't hard. Keeping God's commandment ain't hard. It's a temptation. It's a lifestyle. It's how you want to look. Now, let me ask you another question. What you eat? What you, what's your favorite food? Salmon. Salmon? Okay, that's the answer. What about you? My favorite food? Shoot. That's a great question. I would say uh, pasta. Pasta? Fredo. Chicken Alfredo? Yes. All right. What about shrimp Alfredo? I do eat shrimp. I do eat seafood. Seafood? Not all the time, but I do eat seafood. Uh, okay. <laughs> you eat seafood? So when I when you say seafood, there's many different creatures in the sea. Species. Salmon is clean. You can eat the salmon. Now watch this. Give me Leviticus chapter 11, verse 9. I'm showing you that God's command is not hard. It's just what we choose and desire to do. Watch That's it. right. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 9. Bring it out. He shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Anything that's in the waters, God going to give you what you eat. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So my question is, hey. does shrimp or lobster, do they have skins, I mean, fins and scales? They don't. Now, the anatomy of a shrimp, what is it equivalent to? Why? Well, huh? Like a pig? It's nasty like a pig, you're right. Yeah, and they clean up like pretty good. They eat up. And a, the bottom feeders. Yeah, bottom. And when there's one of fish, when you're salmon that you like, take a boo boo, the shrimp come clean it up. They eat. Right. They're bottom feeders. So the shrimp is an arthropod. You know what an arthropod is? It's the equivalent of a roach. Right. The shrimp and the roach are cousins. You know, they're of the same species. One is on land. One is on water. Now, I had seen not many black people I done see go chase down a roach in the corner, grab it up, throw some uh, some seeds in or some tawny creole, oh, and they have a roach ball. Right. We have a shrimp ball, but we ain't had no roach ball, but they the same species. That's freaking out. Just one on water, one on land. This is what God trying to get us. We too royal to be eating insects, bro. That's right. We royalty, but we have been taught it. But they told us the insects are a delicacy. Then they'll give you a water filtration system to purify your water that's coming out of the faucet. But why would they need to do that when God already put the shrimp and the crawfish in the water to clean it? Bring it up, Bob. Yes, sir. So they give you a substitute for breaking God's commandments. That's it, Chuck. This is why people get what's called iodine poisoning. Because when you look at the anatomy of the shrimp right down his belly, he usually had what's called the boo-boo vein. While well, all of the, the, the disgusting pesticides and poison is in his vein. You have up. to open that vein up and clean it out with your finger. If you put it up under a microscope, you'll see all kind of worms and bacteria and all that. But we eating that. Bring it up. And then we wonder why we're getting sick. Why we got high blood pressure, diabetes. This is because we eat things that God tells us not to eat. That's, right. that's why he say, that's why he said, for your sin, you will have curses on you. These are the curses of the black community. Because we don't keep God's commandments. Right. But that ain't hard. It ain't hard. Now, let's, tell, let's talk about this, the lobster for a minute or the crab. What is his What is his counterpart on land? Bring it up. The lobster and crab? Uh -huh. It's like a rodent, right? A spider. 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 A spider. Look at his anatomy. He got just as many legs as most spiders. He has claws like most spiders. Right. His teeth is up under the bottom like most spiders. Bring it up. He is the equivalent of the spider of the ocean. Thanks. That's it. That's what he is. And then we crack him open and eat the yellow stuff that's inside. The yellow stuff that's inside him is bacteria and pesticide. We say it. I'm from Louisiana. Yeah. I know. I'm from, I'm from Meridian, Mississippi. Right next door to New Orleans. Two hours from New Orleans. I grew up in it too. Yeah. I grew up eating it too. I ain't never even heard nobody say that. But nobody broke it down to him. See, you know, see. Nobody ever told us. See. Now watch what the Bible says. Keep reading. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. So God says shrimp, crab, and lobster, crawfish is an abomination. That's right. To us. How does God feel about abomination? Not good. You say not good. What about you? 
Wait, wait, wait. I feel like he, um, he won't want us. He won't want us partaking in. Despise it. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. Let's hear God's word. You got it? 15, 13. Sirach. The book of Sirach, chapter 15, and verse 13. The Lord hate him all abomination. What word God used for abomination? You know? Read it. Hey. The Lord hate him all abomination. So not only is it disgusting to him, he hates it. Right. So when you eat it in defiance of his commandment and then you get sick, God says, that's what you get. See, the Lord panic. <laughs> we don't know God. He a black man. Right. He's right. like, I'm telling you, don't do it. You say, you know what, Lord? I'm going to do it anyway. He said, okay. Then that stomach hurt. Right. Get the bubble on you like, oh, God. Or like me, if I eat shrimp and then go work out at the gym, I have what's called an exercise-induced allergy. So if I eat crawfish or shrimp, and then I go exercise and my pores open and it causes me to swell up. I have a bad aller allergic reaction. I almost died one time in practice. Ate some shrimp in the cafeteria, went to the gym and worked out. My whole team had to carry me and take me to the, uh, what they call the, um, the medical station. Because I'm allergic to it. I never knew I was allergic to it. I grew up in it. But I found out I had that. Right. But God was telling me, you could die from that. And we didn't know no better. Now watch this, Proverbs 1. Let me show you something. Oh, God, can I say God was petty? I want to back it up. Yes, yes. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1. Verse 26. Verse 26. Verse 26. Bring it out. I also will laugh at your calamity. God said, I will laugh at your calamity. Once, when we die, calamity means your trouble, your fall, your sickness. We don't understand that. If the Lord tell us that we should love our neighbor as ourselves, and then we take a gun and go get in a shootout and we get killed from the shootout because we went and did that. The Lord said, I'm laughing at you. The Christian church will not teach you the truth about God's word. That's right. God said, look, I told you, love your neighbor as yourself. Thou shalt not kill. You take a gun and say, I'm going to go kill that nigga on the other side of town. And as you going over there, he see you first and he pull out and kill you. God said, he laughing at you. Yes, Because he told you not to do it. But we don't understand that. We don't have no fear of God. So now, what we do? Man, I ain't worried about that. Man, everybody's seeing. Oh, who wrote that Bible? That's, that's the first thing we say. Then when the judgment comes, oh, Jesus, God, why? Lord, Jesus. That's the first thing we do. That's, yeah, that's what he say. Read it again. I also will laugh at your calamity. Go ahead. I will mock when your fear cometh. So you know how you be riding dirty? Some people, some people be riding dirty out here. Some people may know what I'm talking about. Some people may not. Some people be riding dirty with drugs in their car. Yeah, as soon as the police pull up behind them, whoop, whoop. oh God, please don't let them church try. Please don't hit me by the pass by me. Oh, my nigga, my nigga, put the gun down. Uh, uh, put that weed out back there, nigga. Get spray, spray the car down. Then the police pull you over and say, probable cause, I smell weed. And he search your trunk. You're in fear as he's searching your trunk because you shouldn't be selling drugs in the first place. Right. Y'all go ahead, you're fine. You shouldn't be selling drugs in the first place. So now when you get in fear because the police is behind you now, now you say, God, Lord Jesus, please, just this one time, and I promise you I won't sell dope no more. Bring it up. Right. As soon as you get past that, you go right back to selling that dope. Yeah. Because we don't fear God until he put it on us. Yeah, really? Until he put it on us. Then he put it on us. We like, oh, Lord, I see what you were saying. But by then, we three kids in, three baby mamas, all of them crazy, got STD, can't get married, That's you understand, can't get no job. Then we really want to cry to God. Watch this, read it again. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh at desolation, uh -huh. and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you. Watch this. Then shall they call upon me. He said, when you're going through it, then you're going to call on me. Then you're going to say, Lord Jesus, why? Lord, please hear my prayer. Go ahead. But I will not answer. Did you, did you know this is in the Bible? No. Because I didn't. When I read this, I said, oh, man, we've been playing with our life this whole time. We didn't know nothing, and nobody told us nothing. Right. That's why in the church, they said, don't read the Old Testament. Yeah. God vindictive back then. Right. You know, God was a, he wasn't dealing like he's dealing now. Right. Now that Christ called you good. No, no, no. When Christ comes, you still won't get the same judgment. Yeah, that's right. Right. right now, it's the grace period to get it right. Right. Stop eating the shellfish and the pork and the shrimp. That's get ourselves right. Marry that woman you slay and you marry that week. Right. right? Come on. Then shall they call upon me. But I will not answer. Yeah. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Oh, you hear this? We're going to look for God, and he's going to be nowhere to be found. Right. So when he going to be found by us? Hosea 5.15. Bring it up. How are we going to find God? He's going to show you right here. 
The book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse 15. Come on. I will go and return to my place. So the Lord said, because of my sin, he going to go and return to his place. Read. Till they acknowledge their offense. He going to do that until, meaning it ain't going to be forever. It's until, read, and seek my face. So read again. Till they acknowledge their offense. Well, you acknowledge your sin. We got to all acknowledge our sin. Go ahead. And seek my face. We got to seek the Lord's face. You ain't going to find God in the movie theater. You're not going to find God on the television. That's right. You got to go to the Bible. Bring it up. It's the origin of his word. That's why it's the most sold book on the planet Earth. Some people say it's because of propaganda. Oh, they just want to push propaganda. No, God making it that way. Right. So you have no excuse on the day of judgment to say, Lord, I didn't know. He said, well, the book been sitting there. He going to show you. He Bring say, it up. He said, oh, you didn't know? And he going to show you a flash of yourself riding in a Bible being there. Are you at the hotel room about to smash another man's wife and the Bible right there on the nightstand? Hey. Are you about to lie in court and the Bible right there? Are you about to sell drugs to your own boy and then a car right in front of you got two Bibles in the back seat? Right up. He going to show you on that day. Oh, no, see, you always had a chance. You just didn't take heed. Right. He been showing us. That's why he sent us here today and y'all walked through here today right. to show you. Come on, you. We need y'all to subscribe to help us push. We got a lot of work to do in North Carolina. The Carolinas need this work. Right. You know what I'm saying? The Carolinas need this work. So we need y'all to go and subscribe right now. Grab your finger. This one right here in particular. Right. Swipe the YouTube that you're probably already watching. Click the YouTube app. Right. Go to IUIC Riley page. Right up under there, it says subscribe. Click that button one time. Click that check. Subscribe to IUIC Riley. Men leading by example. Nation is family.